Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Insights at Dee Dee Lynn Designs, a unique twist in the art of wire. I want to welcome all of you today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And most of all, everybody, don't forget to hit the bell. I'm going to try to be more consistent in getting new tutorials out and forget ignore my scratch that was yesterday hiking anyways I'm gonna teach you all how to make this incredibly it's called Archimedean when in, it means the Greek spiral this incredible beautiful really relaxed super easy flowing no sharpies spiral bracelet now this one I did in copper and I used black onyx and Amazonite so really pretty compliment. And the one we're going to be making today, which I've already started, is going to be sterling silver with turquoise because there's nothing more beautiful than pearls and turquoise with sterling. So before we get started, uh, as I mentioned, please, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell. And, um, your comments and feedback are very important. Now, before I get started, just a couple of notes. I am very detail-oriented, and I do that specifically for beginners. So if you're advanced, then you're going to know where this is going to go really, really quick. Um, most advanced students can look at this and go, no problem. So for beginners, it's a totally different story. So just to give you an idea, I made my own clasp, which will be hooking to the side, as you saw me demonstrate there a minute ago. Isn't that cool? So this is an eight inch bracelet, and if we come down to my mat here, um, each one of these lines to the next line uh, is one inch. So we've got eight inches here. Today we're gonna be making a little bit smaller one. So the first thing you want to do is get your material. So we're gonna be doing, I did 18 gauge. Now here's what's really important. You're gonna need 10 inches if you want a six and a half to seven inch bracelet. And you're gonna need, uh, not 10 inches you guys, 10 pieces and you're gonna need 12 pieces of wire, which are going to be cut four inches long. You can use 20 or 18 gauge. What's really important, and this is for you newbies, when you're first cutting wire, before you choose your gauge, make sure that the whole size in your stone will fit your wire. So this hole is over a millimeter in circumference. So my 18 gauge sides beautifully through there. But when I did the one here with the Amazonite and Onyx, the biggest gauge that I could get through here was 20. So you really wanna make sure, unless you have a bead reamer and you wanna ream out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A minimum of ten beads, which is really boring. Um, you certainly can do that. Additionally, we're going to be making our own custom clasp, and um, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is, as I mentioned, decide on what beads you're going to use. Oh, and let me tell you guys, I am using on my sterling. This looks like a four millimeter round bead. These, I believe, were six. Yep. These were six millimeter. You can use all the way up to eight millimeter if you want. It's really your call. I've been looking for round, half round, uh, drilled through uh, stones. Because uh, it's so much nicer when we don't have the round on the back. It's fine when you're working with smaller stones. But I want to start working with some 12-gauge stones. So if anybody knows where some drilled through half round, round. I don't even know how to describe it. But I want the back flat. So basically, I only want the top of the stone rounded. And I want the back completely flat. And it has to be drilled through in order to do these kind of designs. So anything between four... Eight, six, ten millimeter, it's your call. I probably wouldn't do ten millimeter. If I did, I wouldn't do as many um as many beads. 
taken a sip of my coffee. Okay, so I've already started this. So you need to cut yourself, again, 10 pieces, four inches long of 20 or 18 gauge wire. You're also going to need jump rings, a lot of them. So I did 42, number three. So when I'm saying number three, I'm saying three on my six step bell making pliers. There's six steps and if you're a beginner and never seen these, the smallest is one, then you go left to right. Two, three, four, five, and six. So you need a minimum of 40, and if you're making a bigger bracelet, you're gonna need a lot more than that. But I did 42 for now, and um, I, I don't remember what I cut. Yeah, I wrote it down. I cut 20, number two. Okay, so the second one on your bell making pliers. Okay, so I made my jump rings on my bell making pliers. I'm not gonna be teaching you how to do that today. I'm gonna be doing another tutorial pretty soon here on making class, making hooks, making jump rings, etc. So stay tuned, tuned for that. So you're gonna need your bell making pliers. You're gonna need your nippers just to cut your wire initially. You're gonna either need flat nose or chain nose to twirl your wire. So here's a very, very, very important technique. A lot of people, when they're first starting, and it's so normal, so be really kind to yourself, have no idea how to understand how far back they're going to spiral their wire so it's centered so that when you start to spiral the other side, they're equal on both sides. Mine are perfectly symmetrical and the exact amount of swirls on each side. So this is a great tip and technique and I am really into techniques and tips. You need to mark your wire and then after you do a couple, you can eye it or mark them all. But basically what I did is I found the center of this four inch piece of wire and I drew a line right dead center, which is two inches. Then I put my bead on. And I lined it up on my mat at, at four inches and then I moved my bead, can you see this down here? To the two inch mark again, so it should be dead center. And I want that bead right in the middle of that mark. And then I marked my wire on each side. And I marked it a little to the inside to where, let me just move this right dead center, to where you can still see it on the outside too. So again, I found dead center. Then I put my wire back down on my measuring mat. I dead centered it to two because I have four inches of wire and then I marked it on each side so I know where to stop with my swirl. Measuring is key, especially for beginners. And I will tell you, the most technical wire artists in the world that are getting three to $7,000 for some of their pieces, um, they measure a lot. They're also so sophisticated and progressed and advanced so far that they can do a lot of things by eye. So it will really help you, you know, excel in this incredible, magical, ancient art of wire. So that's what you want to do. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a swirl. So here's another tip. You want your hole big enough so that you can get your jump rings through and you're doing two jump rings on each side. I decided on the sterling, I wanted the hole bigger. I wanted a more dramatic look on this particular bracelet, okay? If you notice on the copper, the holes are smaller, but you wanna make darn sure you can get your jump rings in here. So this is 20 gauge, and I just had enough space to get two jump rings in, because we're using those jump rings to connect each spiral link, okay? So that's really important. You might wanna start on some practice wire if you're new. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I know that I want a bigger hole and I'm using a bigger size, I'm using number two. You can certainly use number one, but just make sure that's big enough for what you wanna do. I am just going to, now that I have my wire marked, 
I am just going to make a swirl and the first thing I'm going to do is start my first circle and I really try to really bring that circle in okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it up on itself a little bit you don't have to I do there's a million techniques believe you me just don't want it smaller than my other loops and I'm just gonna pull it into itself a little bit to give myself a head start then if you've never done a swirl you want to grab the side not the entire piece because then you have nowhere to go you want to grab the side and it's kind of like a push push you're pushing your hands towards each other as you're rolling the wire. So did you see how I'm using this hand to push it in? An 18 gauge is gonna be much stronger than an, a thicker wire than 20 is. So I'm holding relatively close and I'm rolling in and rolling in. Now if I get too much gap in there, which is fine by the way you guys, but if I do, I'm very particular, I'm just gonna kinda of pull that wire in a little bit and so this is all we're going to do for 10 pieces of wire. Now I'm going to stop at my line. And uh, if it's too close, I can always roll back a little bit. And here's where you're going to attach your bead. And I am using real authentic gemstones. I don't like to use anything that's not organic unless I'm making sun catchers or adding some beautiful little Swarovski crystals to a chain or a dangle. So as you can see, I've got plenty of space on this other side. Can you see that? So all I'm gonna do is roll this wire in just a little bit more. Okay, so now we're gonna do the other side, but we're gonna do the opposite. We're not gonna roll it towards the other swirl we're gonna go on the we're gonna roll it on the opposite side so this swirl is going to be pointing down and when we're done with this one it's going to be pointing up so you're going in the opposite direction and it's the same exact thing which is why I did all these in advance because it would be super boring to watch me do this 10 to 12 times and it would be a really long video and if you've been watching me for a while, y'all know my videos aren't really uh, short anyways. I mean, there's a lot of wonderful artists out there that do videos where they don't go all the way through everything, and I can certainly understand why. So they try to give you, you know, what the basics of what they're doing, and then um, you can complete from there. So I'm getting more in that direction now because... It's kind of like Kelly Jones, and she's so great for beginners. Uh, she's a wonderful, wonderful person. And um, uh, she, in the beginning, went through the entire, some of her tutorials were two hours long, and that just is incredibly patient and gracious of her. And I did initially, too, but um, anyways, um, she now, you can see now where she's changing and, and uh saying we're going to do this many, you know, millimeters or this many inches. So here's what you should have, okay? So that's all you're going to do. You're going to make a ton of these based on how long you want your bracelet. Now, I like to hammer my medals, uh, when, especially when it's something we're wearing on our wrist. And even though this is 18 gauge, now I'm going to have to come down here on the back of my mat here so that I don't hit my bead. And I'm sure you can see that right at the corner. Let me see if I can move my camera in a little bit. Okay. So right here, I'm just going to hammer this with my rubber mallet just a couple of times. Just want to make sure it's really worked hard. Now, again, I'm using sterling silver. So if you're new to sterling silver, I don't recommend you use it for this. Sterling silver can be upwards of $15 a foot. If you don't buy it in bulk because they sell it in ounces, 
Um, it's very expensive. My weaving wire is 53 cents a foot, and I use sometimes 30 feet of wire in one piece. So you start adding it up. So if you're new to wire wrapping, I do not recommend, but you do whatever you want because you will waste so much wire because you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Now, what am I doing here? I got a couple of nicks in my wire, which is going to bring me to another subject. And I use a 180 grit file. It's like a buffer, but on a file to just file out some of my little nicks. Um, it doesn't always happen, but it happens. Now, here's something about tarnish resistant wire. I, like many, unknowingly started out that way because many wire artists suggested it. And I think probably they did for beginners because a lot of beginners are very attracted to sterling. But for me, it is a nightmare wire, especially if you're going to market. I just yesterday sold a beautiful cross to a client of mine for Easter. And she was telling me how she bought a piece from another girl and it started peeling and this is my exact sentiment about why I do not like tarnish resistant wire. Even if you're going to market, I will guarantee you as pretty as it may look, if you've made one nick on that wire, it's going to start peeling off eventually and you will see the copper core below it. So I'm not slamming a company that does this, you know, because that's what they do for a living and a lot of people like it, but I'm just saying you don't want to get a reputation out the gate of, I bought this beautiful piece from this incredible artist, but it fell apart. It peeled on me. That would completely humiliate me. So I would use it for sun catchers and things like that maybe. Um, but if you want to work with sterling, I'm going to highly recommend you start with sterling. So enough of my carrying on, but I'm always trying to give you guys some really helpful ideas and tips and techniques because ultimately, if you're going to go where I've gone, and I'm now in three galleries, um, you definitely, definitely uh, want to really take that into consideration. So I'm not going to mark the rest of my wires. I don't need to. Um, I did this for you so that you could create symmetry and have a perfect center. So I'm going to do this two more times. And I'm just going to use my other wire that I just rolled into a spiral as my gauge. I closed that down a little bit too much, but that's okay. I'm just going to roll it into itself. There we go. So we're going to do this, like I said, how long you want your bracelet. As I mentioned, the copper one is eight inches long. So I use 12 spiral links on that. Now I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to take my completed spiral and I'm going to compare it. So I know that I can come up just a little bit more. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Then I'm going to get my bead and do the same thing. I'm going to turn it over on the opposite side so that my first spiral is pointing down. You want it pointing down and my wire, the tip of my wire, so that spiral is going down. That's why you can't really see it unless I turn it sideways. And I'm going to do the same thing again. And then we're going to connect them. Now, if you're new to making spirals, it's a little hard at first. The reason why these spirals are open again, everybody, is because we're attaching links we wouldn't be able to do the bracelet, right? You always want to get in your best working position. Don't be afraid to move everything around instead of trying to twist your wrist and get that wire to do what you want it to do. I'm holding pretty firm, just so if you're wondering. That's a little loose there. So that's two and one more. So here's what we got. And you could actually use, if you had three millimeter beads, and this is just an idea, you could use that in, in your spiral 
uh, because three three millimeter beads would fit beautifully right there and it would completely change the design. Another thing I wanna share with you before we go further, you can make this into a necklace. I would use smaller wire and much smaller beads because it's going to be a necklace, unless you want it a big statement piece, um, um, you could certainly do that. Or you could just do it as a bar necklace, just make three of them and then just let this be the drop. Don't know if you can see what I'm talking about. So this would be the drop on your neck. So it would just be hanging and it'd be such a pretty piece. So you could do a lot of things with this. Secondly, you could turn this into a ring, relatively easy. You would just make your spiral holes smaller and you would you have your wires go through the two holes to make a darling ring. And I may do a tutorial on that. When I'm doing, when I'm working on something, it's always freestyle. I can't draw, I wish I could. Um, so I'm always, as I'm doing something, I always see something else. And I'm like, oh, I could make this out of this or I could make that out of that. So keep that in mind. And as you advance, I promise you, you will start to think outside the box. You won't need... Um, to watch tutorials as much. And when you do watch tutorials, you're gonna be looking for, and I really encourage you to do this, look for technique. How did they do that? How did they hide that wire? How did they get that in that position? Uh, for example, I'm gonna show you this cross here in just a minute. I could not do this a year ago. I've seen several crosses, even in high-end jewelry stores, and I wanted to make a cross and um, I tried it last year, or maybe a little bit before that, I don't know you guys, but a while ago, and I couldn't do it. It was so precise. You had to be so absolutely precise with your measurements and your bends. It was mind blowing. So anyways, I did it. And if you hold on a second, I wanna show you. I've sold them all. If you go to my Facebook page, and I'm hoping you can hear me, because I had to get up away from my station. If you go to my Facebook.com DD Lynn Designs page, all my social media is DD Lynn Designs, including my Gmail, DD Lynn Designs at Gmail. You will be able to follow all my new designs. But this is one of the crosses that I just finished. This is a rather large one. It is a crucifix. And on top I used purpurite and I made this beautiful, beautiful copper heart just for a little contrast. It's 100% sterling silver and it has uh, the thorn of crowns on it and his hands and feet are binded and um, this really is a very advanced piece. And I've changed my bells many times. I've weaved some, I've wrapped some. So if you wanna see all the crosses I just did for Easter, go check out my Facebook, Dee Dee Lynn Designs. Now I've seen many, like not many, but I saw a cross similar to this, but it was manufactured, uh, um, but it was a very similar concept in a, a very high-end jewelry store. I took a picture. And then I think his name is Marlo. He did a cross like this about three or four years ago. Incredible wire artist. He hasn't, I don't think he's been live for years. I don't watch tutorials very much, but I did some snapshots of his work. On my other ones, I added a freshwater pearl and I didn't oxidize the ster sterling. I uh, brought it up to a high polish and sealed it. And then I did garnets and I made custom change. So I just want to share with you where you can go someday with all of this. As simple as this looks, it's very advanced. Okay, so a little segue out of there and back to what we're doing. Let's go ahead and finish this off and then I'll show you how to connect it. And that's it. You've made yourself a beautiful bracelet or a beautiful necklace. So again, I'm turning this upside down and I'm going to make my last swirl.
And your wire doesn't have to be super straight when you're doing this, when you measure your a 10 to 12, 10 inch, four inch pieces. The reason being is as you can tell, we're gonna be rolling it. You don't want kinks in it, but you don't have to worry about it being super straight. So we have completed all our pieces. So by now, hopefully you've cut, and you wanna cut all these in advance, you guys, it's really monotonous to cut that many jump rings. I'm gonna get a jeweler saw so that I can do a bunch and then just put them on a steel dowel or wood dowel in the garage and go ahead and um, cut them all at once. Taking a sip of the coffee. Okay, so now we're going to connect. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have two of the number threes on your links on each side. So I've started with two here, see them dangling? Okay, and now I'm gonna do two on another link and I'm gonna close them off. I need my flat nose. Now when you're doing jump rings, there's another technique and tip you wanna come very close. Notice how my hand on this one, because these pliers are very long, are very high up on the plier. The closer you are to your work, the more control you will have. I am just wiggling this back and forth until I hear them connect and like rub against each other. And that's how you do a jump ring. And when I'm done polishing this, you probably, it's, you, you likely won't barely see the seam because I tumble all of my jewelry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this through there. And close it off. Now I'm going to get my number two. Remember we made 20 or so number twos and 40 and more of number threes. And no problem having extras, you will use them. Get yourself a little bead box. So let me get this. So I'm just gonna open this up and I'm going to make sure they're in the same direction. Now you can do them in the opposite direction. I wanna show you what that looks like. But then what will happen for me, I didn't care for that too much, but it's just personal preference. Then, then the other one's gonna be facing and then the other one's gonna be facing out. It's not a bad look at all. I don't know, for some reason, I kinda like them all trailing together. But I might do it the other way sometime too. So I'm gonna, whoops, I dropped my little jump ring and you don't wanna drop sterling jump rings on the floor and suck them up. Sterling, as I mentioned, is very, very expensive. Unless you're some giant jeweler that I can afford to buy sterling wire in pounds, and I just dropped that jump ring again. Where did it go? Is that it? Is that the size? Yeah. Um, it's just, it's really one of those wires you don't want to waste. So what I'm going to do is I'm holding my bracelet and I'm going to turn it upside down to make my life easy instead of trying to chase these jump rings and I'm just going to hook them now you know why you need to have a certain size jump ring I'm going to hook them in between those two right there and I'm going to close them off if your jump ring didn't have enough circumference meaning wasn't big enough yeah you may not be able to get it over this swirl. So you might wanna make a practice jump ring first to make sure that you can get it over the swirl, okay? So we've connected this one and they're in, they should be in the same direction unless I did it backwards because I've done that a lot. Did I do this one backwards? You have to have your, your rings in such a position and I think I did because that looks twisted to me. I did. So this is the part that drives me crazy about wire. <laughs> so I'm going to take that out for a second. I want to make sure that these are going up and that's flat and this is going in. Well, the first thing I did wrong was I wrapped it to the wrong one. 
Okay. Are these in the same direction now? They are indeed. And you'll find that will happen a lot. It starts getting a little confusing. And it's just okay. Just part of this magical journey. There we go. So you see that? They're in the same direction now. So now I'm going to get my next jump ring. And that's all we're doing, gang, is we're connecting it now. So I want to make sure that everybody's in the right direction. And you notice my two wires dangling there. Do you see that? I'm going to come up underneath both of those. So let me show you that again. My wires are dangling and then I'm just going to turn it around. This is the most tedious part and takes the longest because you got a lot of connecting to do. So let me just take a look at that and they are in the right direction. So we're going to do another one and I'm going to set myself up this time. I'm going to preset my rings. It definitely looks like my cameras. I'm going to move it down a little bit so I look more center. There we go. So just to make my life easy, kind of like a conveyor belt or something. <laughs> I don't know. You know, so I'm just going to put these jumps on all of these. Because remember, we're using the smallest jump ring to push them through. Now I wanted to share something with you guys about this bracelet. You could use one big jump ring just to connect the two. I didn't like the look because the jump ring has to be a whole lot bigger to get through both of these holes and the distance of the spirals between the holes. So I had this big arc sticking up. For me, it wasn't my thing, but you may like that. So you might want to give that a go. I'm sitting here thinking of all these things I try. So that gives you guys ideas. Okay, let's do these over here and I'm going to have to cut some more jump rings. So I'm, I'm thinking, I don't think 42 is going to be enough. Yeah, it's, I'm going to need more, but that's okay. I'm going to make more. And I'm going to need two on the other side. And if you're wondering where I, what I'm using, where I got these little caps, they're from medicine bottles. People throw away millions of medicine bottles and I try to recycle everything. I use all different size of medicine bottles um, to uh, use as a measuring device to wrap and shape my wire. So that's another cool tip. Um, just look around your house. It's like if, if you're looking at a design someone did and it calls for 30 centimeters, you know, you can either buy a dowel at the store or start measuring everything in your house. Okay, so I am now going to connect again. And I just saw this jump ring isn't where I want it to be. There we go. I don't know if you could have heard that click much better. Okay, so I'm going to get my two pieces together and I got two wires here dangling so it can get a little 
confusing. I know I want them in the same direction. I'm going to get my hand out of the way here for a minute so that you can see. And I'm going to come up underneath this one and this one. And then I'm going to turn them around and let them dangle. So now I know they're lined up. And I'm going to close off that jump. And I'm going to get my next one. Oops, caught it. I think I caught it in time without it flying on the floor. Well, I can't see it, so I'm gonna have to grab another one. I'll find it later. I'm not liking these. I gotta find my other ones that I like. There we go. Much more petite. So I need to turn this around. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. So I'm turning it around so that my jump rings are dangling down there. And then I'm gonna grab my jump ring, if I can get the right angle on it, and I'm gonna slide it through. Now, if you wanted even more busyness going on with this, you could do double jumps on every connection, which is gonna change the entire look, meaning not the spirals, but it's gonna give it uh, more depth, you know, cause it's gonna have double jumps. So there we go, right? So now you know where I'm going. I'm gonna do the last one off camera to save some time, and then I'll show you how to connect your class. Be right back.